I'm still smiling because I don't know if we're doing it. Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, no, it come says, on. Your cheeks are live, live on Facebook now. Good we're, evening. we're live on Facebook now? Yep, this is live. Amazing, yeah. isn't it? See, this is the things that you've got to learn is it, it, technology. Not easy. Technology is not easy. So, good evening. We're talking about emotions today. And um, what was that buzzing noise? Can you hear it? You're ready. Not, not, not hear it at this end. No, uh, it's probably right. sat in your ears. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're talking about um, emotions today. And as we said, we would do Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, bring you live discussions as much as possible and awareness, education and a sense of hope because you are not alone. OK, um, so we're here talking about emotions. So. Would you like to kick off? My name is Kerry Mussington from the Mind Over Matter Project, also known as the MOM Project, Suicide Prevention, Mental Health Awareness. So, yeah, and uh, down below is, I think you're down below on the screen, will be uh, Jean-Laure Delon. I call him Jay, uh, from JDA Lifestyles and um, Fitness. And we've collaborated to bring awareness to the community and some solutions because that's what we have to give at the end of the day is the solutions we also have intelligence service investigations with his expertise and we have nikki down there who is a survivor and what raises awareness with the mom project uh, to prevent suicide to prevent what does it prevent to you nikki addiction <laughs> Yeah, um, brilliant. So on the verses of emotions, so where do we start? Anybody like to go first? What you think your idea is? Actually, Jay, I think this was your topic and something that you wanted to discuss. So take it away. Um, we've just got another entry. So take it away. If you hold one second. Okay. Um, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We never know uh, who's come in. This is actually live. So therefore we can... Uh, all right. Um, Speak. Go ahead. All right. Um, it's hard. It's hard to know where to start. Emotions for me comes in different form, a different format, and it's whether it's learning how to control, control and deal with it. Uh, being ex-military, I think Adrian would uh, appreciate this. Uh, being um, ex-forces himself, uh, peace force, uh, we I've learned to detach myself from reality. And I guess it's because <laughs> in the forces, we have a warped sense of humor uh, because you detach yourself from reality. Um, I feel um, as a man, um, sharing your emotion. I mean, I come from a different culture. Uh, I'm French as well, believe it or not. But in France, French people, men are more about sharing their passion, sharing their emotion. And, and it's all right to cry, where in this country, it's all, you shouldn't cry. You shouldn't, um, and it's not good for a man to show their emotion or, or stuff like that. So, but for me, uh, I've never, I find it hard to cry uh, because it's the way I've been, I've been brought up in a sense that it's just, sometimes it's hard to, but I'm not afraid, frightened to show my emotion because I believe uh, it's better out than in. And I think uh, uh, a lot. I think a lot of men sh sh probably should learn how to bring that emotion out, rather to keep it keep it in. If you keep it in, it's a lot more dangerous. That's my opinion. What do you think on that, then, Miss Intelligence? Well, yeah, I, I would agree um, with pretty much everything that uh, JD uh, has just said. Uh, in particular, um, the issue of. Uh, himself and myself being ex-forces, um, you're more so in the army than the police, but equally in the police, um, you know, you, you could book on to duty in the morning and think you're just going to do um, a normal foot patrol and you could find yourself uh, at a murder scene that, that's very uh, gruesome and all the rest of it. Um, 
and you, you you're expected to perform um, as normal. Uh, you, you've got to take so many things into consideration, preserving evidence, trying to get justice for the victim, and you've got to do that in a timely fashion whilst hold yourself together and not, not a repeat, not display your own emotions about what you've just seen uh, and, and just come across. I mean, for argument's sake, it could be the murder of a small child that you've just come across, you know? And that's gonna affect you um, differently. Uh, again, I would also agree with what JD said with um, uh, the issue of, of like himself being a Frenchman, uh, the French are notorious for being passionate, both men and women, but here in the UK, we are uh, very monotone, I would say, uh, very stiff upper lip. Um, and I guess, you know, you get into like where we all are mid forties and so on. And, and we've just developed our own stiff upper lip. So uh, I, I personally don't think I've ever seen my own father cry. Um, just, I just don't remember him ever crying. But again, he's of that generation where, you know, men are strong, we, we, we don't cry, that's for women. So I think um, that's their mentality. Um, I, I do think uh, we, in particular as men, are getting better, um, but there's still a long way to go. That's, that's what I think. It's interesting, you know, um, are we accountable for actually telling our boys, children, to stop crying, um, you know. I think I've I've done that myself. If I'm, I'm I'll be honest. I'm a mum of three, and well, they're all grown up now. But if I look back, I've done that myself. Don't cry, boys. Don't cry. And that rhetoric, that stigma, and it, it, it's out there, isn't it? Uh, boys don't cry, and that's not true. When you and, and I think this is the breakdown between male and female. Um, of, of not showing those emotions and um, because women expect a male to show that emotion but the emotions sometimes have come out in an aggressive manner you know with with people and that leads us on to uh, abuse and things like that so you know abuse can come in many shapes and sizes when people are trying to express themselves we can give we will we will give all those examples you know so they're recognizable and we'll just reel them out whatever but um it is emotions play a part of how we interact with one another um how we go further forward with our own lives and whether or not we explore to interact with one another or not but sometimes those emotions is doom and gloom i don't know how what you did how you did you suppress your emotions through the things that you witnessed you know um yeah well speak to you in a minute you know is that <laughs> sorry and I'm listening that's okay um I will go through those emotions in a minute but when you witness such tragedy you know it's alarming you don't you, you might get used to it eventually but basically your head is storing all of those images and hence flashbacks right and PTSD right so you're storing all those images and some people react in certain ways and I'm going to ask going to explore the differences between you two, uh, Jay and Intelligence. Um, I'm going to explore the differences between how you handled those because that's, uh, and again, you see there's Nikki down the bottom also deals with flashbacks. I deal with flashbacks. Again, it's the, emo the emotion. So as we walk through life, we've got that in our head and we're always prepared, right? So we have those barriers up when we're dealing with emotions. And uh, how did you deal with switching off from the tragedies that you saw? Uh, that goes to both male, for the tragedies that you both saw, okay. you know, when you're witnessing those things. How did you replace? Mm -hmm. Yeah, who, who do you want me to start? Do you want me to start? Um... Yeah, you, you, you can answer that one, Jane. I'll, I'll follow you. Well, well, for for me, I, I think it's 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 the sort same of sort of outline Adrian mentioned about a murder scene, a child. But for me, in the army, I've been in the first Gulf War. I've been in Bosnia, and I've served in Rwanda because being in a peacekeeping troop with Rwanda and Bosnia. Um, 
I've seen a lot, a lot of things that would probably make most people's hair stand on and that's what I've got now. But um, for me, this is where the humour comes in. When you're there, you can't, you can't show no emotion. I mean, <laughs> sometimes when you go, you, you go and have a cry and sometimes with your mates you have a cry and that's okay. But when you're there, you just got to be strong. And sometimes, and, and a lot of time it's just numbness. Sometimes you, you see it, but you, you don't really believe it's it's there. You can see uh, people uh, head head missing or a piece of head. And the only way you, you and this is where, I always know an ex-serviceman. I always know I've got a mate of mine that I work for. He's ex-British Transport Police, in ex, he's ex-Army. And, and, and the, and the humour between us, it's quite raw and it's quite sick. But if somebody came in from the outside listening to us, they'll say these two are, are warped. But that's mm. our way to cope with it. That's our way of detaching yourself. And I and I feel again, this is not a good thing. And I, I and and like I said, I think women, for me, women are a lot more stronger than men because women has more ability to get that emotion out get that frustration out share it out and once it's out it's better out than in we tend to bottle things up and it's like you said then that that comes out in not in, in other ways which is which is not good um but for me i think when it comes to men we should be more encouraged to talk about it and i think this is where ptsd uh, uh where where for me, suffering with PTSD is it's only when I confronted it, talked about it, and, and it came to a point when I, I, I had a really good cry. Uh, I, I let it all out and I confronted it. That's the only way you could fix it. It's like in any in, in, in addiction, in fitness, until you, you admit to what you have and you let that emotion out and confront it, you can't, you, you can't bury things in the sand. You can't Put it in the back of your head because it'll always be in the back of your head. The idea is to put it in the front of your head and deal with it, and and that takes a lot of it of emotion. But that takes someone to teach you to show you how, and not to feel the shame of what you've been through. And I think um, I think well, it's not just police forces, paramedics, stuff like that. But I think we we all have the same sort of uh, mindset. But I feel men were probably our, our worst enemy, to be honest. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, I, I, I would uh, I would agree with um, Jay uh, on that equally myself. Um, I've seen uh, a lot of uh, heinous things uh, on 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 a daily basis, and as I said earlier, um, one is expected to carry on um, as as normal. And there there was support and stuff for you uh, at the time. How good it was, um, I'll be honest, I don't know. I never personally felt the need um, to use uh, their, their services. I, I just think that I'm fortunate that I, I, I look at things and um, I think, oh, that's really bad, that's really sad. Um, and I try to take a positive um, out of that, although there were moments, um, and I, I've spoken to you about this before, Kerry, um, as a police officer, I witnessed um, somebody who, who had just momentarily had uh, a heart attack and uh, myself and my colleagues assisted that person um, until the ambulance got there, only to be told by the paramedics that the person had probably died five minutes ago before they uh, actually turned up so because it was in a, a, a public place their protocol is to act as if they are actually saving somebody's life but in essence they knew that the individual had already passed away and that was pretty difficult now a, a while ago I said to you that you know on a daily basis you see dead bodies and you see things like that um, that scenario left me with a sense of uh, failure, I think, is the right word I, I'm looking for, because I felt myself and my colleagues that we couldn't save this lady. Um, you know, people have massive heart attacks all the time and do drop dead, but unfortunately for this lady, that is what had happened uh, to her. We weren't to know that. We were there to protect and to preserve 
life, but unfortunately on that occasion, um, the dice didn't roll uh, in this young lady's uh, favor. But that, that always sticks uh, with me, the image of, of uh, and again, I think the biggest thing with that scenario was the manner in which it happened. Uh, the lady had got off a bus outside uh, Liverpool Street Station in London. Uh, she walked up the steps to enter the train station. Um, and there's several uh, steps to get up onto a platform before you go down the escalators. And um, from memory, she just collapsed before she got to the escalators. And obviously, members of the public um, raised the alarm. And myself and my colleagues uh, assisted her until the paramedics got there. Um, but when the paramedics arrived, um, the mannerism in which they dealt with her, I will say, was very, very harsh and robust. Um, I mean, we, you know, Jay will know exactly what I'm talking about. In the, the train stations, you have uh, screens that, you know, if somebody collapses, station members can go and get screens to give the people some dignity uh, until they, they, you know, get themselves back on their feet or taken away by the ambulance or whatever. Um, and I sent for those to come. But within that two second window, um, the paramedics had cut the lady's clothes away from her. Um, all of her uh, modesty was on display for the whole world to see. And remember, this is outside of, of the, the, the train station, you know. Um, but in hindsight, or with hindsight rather, you understand that that's what the paramedics needed to do. They weren't treating her inhumanely but as much of the stuff that I had seen previously to that that was the most graphic that I'd seen because I realized this lady was you know another two minutes she probably would have walked past me on the escalator um, and now she she's lying there uh, being treated for suspected heart attack which um, was fatal for, for her. So People who are coming in, so uh, I know who's coming. So I'm, I'm allow them to come in, so we can go on to the next. All right. Okay. So I want to really dig dig down, and I'm going to go to Nikki in a second. Welcome, welcome, ladies. We are live on Facebook as well, so be mindful. Hey. Um, so go to Nikki without promoting methods, etc. That's just what we're about. Thank you for joining us for the discussion on right. emotions. Um, the reason we do the MOM project and raise awareness is because of serious emotions when it gets, when life gets the better of us. Um, unfortunately, as you said, gentlemen, earlier that, you know, men don't really express than women do, but men, men are more drastic and they're the silent ones that take their life, you see, and that's why we have to get and talk more. What happens when you are silent and gain in the situation is that we end up self-inflicting pain on ourselves and uh nikki you 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 are in huh? yes, would you like to explain about your a little bit about your journey your emotions where you come from what happened and then we're going to get to uh, sj and lou in a, in, in a moment as well about these emotions okay well um uh hi um uh, basically um oh uh, so I suffer with um, so like addiction, so alcohol, um, and so I think that started a few so years ago. Was so it before I had so my children? So I have three. Um, uh, so I was into like an abusive so like relationship, and so like um, after so like JB was talking about so like emotions and Adrian as well. Um, so I used so like that as um, how would you call it, like a coping mechanism. So, uh, so like if I so like drank, uh, the emotion wasn't so raw, and um, so it would take the pain away emotionally as well as so physically, and so because I was in that type of so relationship, um, so I didn't have so like the confidence that I have so like now, and I found that so like having so like alcohol, so like it gave me the confidence so like to be who I used to be, um. And then a bit more, but so, like, I, so, I began to like to struggle so, like with that because so I um, enjoyed it so, too much, and it's just like oh I'll just have one more, just have a bit more, and then 
uh, uh, it's one of them things that like, I thought I could have it all. You know, is it like work, drink, um, is it like then is it, uh, is it like moving on to be is it a parent, a mother, and um, at one point, so I thought I had it. Is it cracked? Is it like you know? Is it a good and balance? But and then um, so like cracks started to to like appear. Um, uh, I could be you know. I, uh, so just like putting stuff off. Oh, I can't be bothered to do it now. I'll do it later. Oh, that don't matter. So like just so like little things, but that escalated into big things. And then so like I wasn't so like paying my bills on time. Um, so like I wasn't so like keeping appointments. So, so like, I didn't realize it, but so my behavior, so like it's changed. And um, I think so like what it was, was uh, so depression. So like, of, so like the abusive so like relationship. And I was, um, what do you call it? Self-medicating. But rather than going so like to a doctor, so like I thought so like I could so deal with all this. Um, <sighs> I suppose in a way at the time it was um so like a quick so like uh like putting a plaster on but it didn't really so like um heal so the problem I mean so like this went on for oh uh quite a few so years um you know so like it caused um uh so like arguments with so my parents um so like my son um and so it was just so like a horrible atmosphere and uh, the crazy thing is, so like I didn't so like realize that I just thought everybody that had it in for me, you know, I'm right, everybody else is wrong, so you're just getting on my back, so because you ain't got nothing better to do. But so, I mean, so like I did um, counselling, I did AA, and so, uh, so like Kerry was there, so like to talk to right at the beginning. Um, so not only for me, but so for my um, child as well, and then um, yeah. <clears throat> It was just so like good, so like to be able to express yourself, so like without so judgment, and so like that is what so like I needed. So like not anybody saying, oh, you know, so like you're bad parents, so you're wrong, you can't do this. I was uh, so like getting to the so like issue of why are you doing it? So like we need to go back to the root, so like a problem. So I think that so like um, uh, talking about things, it's not always easy, it's not always comfortable. But so, like talking, I think is the best place to like to begin. It's free. I mean, so, like, and um, <laughs> it just—it's uh, like a release, or it was so, like for me. I mean, so, like now, so I don't stop talking. You know, so people are like, "Oh, here she go again." But <laughs> but um, no, I mean, so like if I'm struggling or anything, you know, so pick the phone up. So, like, and talk to somebody it could be so, the tiniest thing like oh the girls haven't so like tidied their bedroom up they're not listening to me rather than so, like oh um so, hitting so, like the um, um f button you know what i mean <laughs> um so like rather than so, like going down the road and buying you know three liters of um cider so like and drink and that's like in two hours so like i actually so like have learned like the coping so, like strategies of is it like staying calm so hitting the pause button that's what so, like, i've found so like to be so useful so not just with so, drinking but so, like any so like um so, issues that might come up rather than just um uh so, like going in without thinking about so, like what i'm going to actually so like say to people so i mean so, um, i'm not gonna lie it didn't happen over so, like night but um uh, so like gradually, you know, so like even so baby steps. So like that is so like going back to so the beginning and so like retraining so like your brain almost. So like to do things in a different way. So like to um so even so like approach things so mentally so in a different so like way. But um so patience. So for me, obviously I can't speak for everybody. Um, <laughs> give time, time. How long and, is it now since you've been so? Oh, crikey. Um, uh, over a year, two years? Actually, it's coming up for three years. This, this, Is it uh, three? It's coming up for three years. This, in, in wow, three. I thought that was about two. And I think you've done incredible. It, it nearly cost oh, you. Oh, thank you. Alcohol nearly cost you your whole life. Children. Your home, your income, yeah. everything. 
uh, one of the things when it comes to the emotions, when you retain all of those emotions and they've got nowhere to go, one of the things yeah. that happen when people are using alcohol, substance abuse as an uh, as as a crutch, um, yeah, can lead to psychosis. And I yes. have witnessed to that psychosis with yourself, and I literally thought you yes. Were and yeah that, i mean so like i had um so like psychotic episodes i ended up so like on a mental unit at um ipswich hospital so like i actually got sectioned i can't remember if it was in three so weeks three four so weeks but so like i went in there so on two um so occasions was so it like months apart so um uh, yeah and it, and so like medication as well. So I still take, so, uh, I think it's Risperidone and um, Cytalopram. So like, I still so like take that so like to this so like day. I mean, so they've reduced the dosage, but so like they still recommend uh, so that I take it so like just to keep me, um, so like not drugged up or anything, but just calm. Yeah. So, so like yeah. I don't so overreact so like to things, but at the same time, so like there's, um so like uh sometimes you can under react so like to so something like when um a person so like um ask you an opinion or something and it's like oh yeah so whatever that's not enough that's just um i don't know uh like people pleasing as well you're acknowledging it but you're not really so given an answer or any advice or you know so like being so like positive or productive and so like I did that for a while, like just like, oh yeah, that would do. And so like and I got on with it. But um yeah, so like things just coming into so like perspective again. And um yeah. Congratulations. I really want to say congratulations. I have watched your journey from start to where you are today. You have done incredible. Yeah. Um Witnessing the reunited, uh, when you reunited with the children, when you became back to your original self, what I realised is a whole mm -hmm. new you. It, it's a new you that you didn't even know existed. Yeah. So, you know, stepping from the past, going forward, realising what the reasons was, who was yeah. accountable for those emotions that were put upon yourself as well. Because what we use is that the word of domestic violence <laughs> come into play. Uh, mental Ooh. abuse and physical abuse come into play and yeah. when you have all of that pounded at you over and over and over again um, it's Ooh. pretty hard to get up and that's what we have to do is that fetus position that we end up being in yeah. we end have to end up standing up and saying you don't get to do that this is my life I'm going to claim yeah. my life back and I'm not going to take these substances or drink and this mm -hmm. like but children to raise an example to set and who else is going to lead these children if the leader is not well so you had to get well and this is the thing yeah about i mean so like that's um, so like the thing as well if i'm not well if i'm not looking after so me who's going to look after so like my so children so i mean so in a way it is so like um a selfish program because you do have to put so like you so at first but that's so for the good of everybody, not just uh, so sticking two fingers up so like to everybody else. So um, yeah, Thank it's you. finding that balance, I think, but also so like recognizing so like um, so your mistakes, where you've so like gone wrong, and rectifying them, mm -hmm. so like not just you know so like oh well that don't matter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening. Right. Um, right. So. Thank you so much and congratulations again. And I'm um, thank you guys for, for coming on here. SJ and Zoli, thank you very much. I think Zoli is way on side and um, mm -hmm. SJ is here in the UK too. So you've been listening to some of these stories and if you've just come in intimately, then, then far away with any questions that you have. But I wanna hear from you ladies down the bottom as well. So SJ, and so, and then we're Zoli and then Plush, okay? You're only here to talk about emotions today. What's your experience with it, SJ? The experience, sorry, experience was what? I mean, I I only heard about the Zoom this evening and was asked to come on, so. Right. Um, uh, we're talking about emotions, how we deal with emotions. Maybe you've recognized people, some people don't deal with emotions, but we're really talking about 
how you handle emotions and how it can actually be destructible without promoting a method. Uh, well, how I handle my emotions, um, I meditate, um, I pray, um, and I think communication is key. If you can't express um, what you want or how you feel, uh, to whoever it is, whether it's family, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's to a stranger, yeah, um, mm. then that's something you need to look at as to what tools you need or what help you may need, yeah. Um, I grew up in a family where we there was a lot of communication going on. Mm. We had family meetings <laughs> for anything. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we were used to... Um, having communication um, with both our parents. Um, <laughs> I think it's about observing yourself as well. Um, Good one. How you feel, what's your triggers, what makes you feel like yeah. that. Um, you know, there's so many different subtle levels, like are you um, projecting onto other people because of the mood you're in or because of an experience that you've gone through? You know, all these kind of things. I, th I think uh, maybe because my dad was a social worker, I um, was very used to this kind of, you know, terminologies being used around us and all of that. Because, I mean, he was always studying us. So as we got older, <laughs> we started to study our parents as well. Um, and I look back on my parents, you know, the good side, the bad side, you know, whatever. Um, because it's a personal <laughs> You're always growing, um, so you shouldn't be the same person every month, every year, yeah, and you have to look at your journey and what you've experienced and, oh, why has that happened to me how many times? Like, for example, I don't know, you've been married three times. Why did you make those similar or same mistakes and, and things like that? Um, for me, if I make a mistake, like if it's a relationship, it cannot, once is enough, twice is too much, right? any mistakes after that it should be some other mistake yeah because it's supposed to be about growth you should have learned from that and then move on to other things um and everything's a learning thing but yeah communication mm -hmm. having a support team whether it's your family friends you know whatever it is have a support team and how you can support yourself but i think another part of it is is how you communicate to yourself mm -hmm. what are your mm -hmm. thoughts how do you speak to yourself? Do you speak positively or negatively? Oh, you're stupid. Da, da, da. Or you feel as if you don't deserve better, whatever that better is, job, relationship, you know what I mean? I don't know, having nice clothes or something. I don't know. Um, how do you speak to yourself? Your first relationship is with you. Mm -hmm. So if that's not on point, everything else is not going to be on point. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, you, you you mentioned a few words in there, which I just want to home to the audience, the viewers, which was um, triggers. Uh, I know that word wasn't around uh, many, many years ago, okay? They didn't use that word in a mental health, um, uh, how it, so what, what they're doing is using that word trigger means how it affects you, mm -hmm. meaning uh, this has happened before, can you please stop it? Because it reminds me of that again. And mm -hmm. when it's familiar to you, there has to be a change. Um, and that that is going to take communication if it's somebody doing it to you um, to get that change as far as uh, triggering, you know? So you triggers is, that word is it is a new word. It hasn't been around that long, but get used to it because that's simply saying, you know what, it is triggering. Basically, it's disturbing, okay? Mm -hmm. And then if you also look at another word within the conversations of emotions where you, you said uh, if somebody else is projecting issues on you and it could be seen as gaslighting, which is another word. So mm -hmm. you have to be mindful of all of these words that they're putting in out at, at us. But the bottom line is emotions. Are you emotional mess or are you emotionally happy? So that's where we want to stay at that eight. Uh, that's what register is somewhere in between where we could be balance that that happiness because that's what the aim is, isn't it? So mm -hmm. co good coping skills. 
Thanks, SJ. Um, Zoli, please introduce yourself and where you're from and tell us about oh my your emotions God. like. Oh my, <laughs> this is the first time ever doing a Zoom. It's amazing. I'm a little international. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm very, very uh, introverted, <laughs> but very, very outspoken. Um, so thanks, I'm excited to be here. I'm in North Carolina, here in the US. Uh, by way of Bermuda, I've been here in the US since I was 16 years old, came off to university at 16. And I've been here ever since. So I think of here as home. I don't sound like it, mind you, um, but I'm, I'm here, just here. Um, I'm just gonna get right to it. Uh, da, da, da. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you look yeah, this is all new, right? I'm like, oh my God, you put that big hand. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, I'm a behavioral psychologist by training. I'm retired. Um, this topic really, really interests me personally. I am a survivor, more accurately spoken now, a thriver. I, I survived for many, many years. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm beyond the, the surviving stage now is that I'm now thriving. Now, what does thriving like mean? That. Talking about the emotion. Um, I gained 200 pounds behind not keeping and you know, getting in check with my emotions. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us can relate as survivors. We numb down, dumb down, because we're ever having to. So that becomes a skill set that we are accustomed to. It serves us well at a point. Uh, then I realized it wasn't continuing to serve me well. And what did it look like? I had become homeless. I let me just let me just back up so that you just have some preface here. I am a survivor of family and domestic violence, and the family and domestic violence were my parents and sibling. Um, and as today, I, and I do not speak negatively about them, I won't allow anyone else to speak negatively about them, um, but I'm not gonna pretend that everything was peaches and cream and lovely. Uh, we are estranged. I'm 57 years old, it's just one other sibling. Um, they, I think I've up until I was like 40 something, I'm 57 now, so in my mid forties is when I decided, now imagine that, at 45 thereabouts, so, so this is not too, too relatively new. I decided mm -hmm. I'm no longer gonna let you, allow you to run my life like that because it was all in my head. Because I was in mm -hmm. one country, they were in another. So they didn't have power over me physically, but emotionally they did. Yeah. And it was getting ready to ruin my marriage. And um, I had to then say, hey, this is how I think, this is how I feel. And the lies that I have believed about myself are just that, lies about myself. They are not true to me. They don't ring true to me. I'm not gonna allow you or anyone else to call me out of my name. Hmm. What is wrong your name? Your fat sight, you're dumb, you're so stupid. I mean, all kinds of da 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 da. And here's the thing, I still deal with that mm -hmm. today. So 57, and if we don't do the head work, go within, go deep, wow. it's something you're ever going to be dealing with. I don't think you're ever going to not deal with it. Then it becomes the whole topic of today, the emotions. How do you handle it? Yeah. I personally wrote an open letter too, because I stopped experiencing it, and I am that person. Hmm. I will tell you I choose not to experience you anymore. I will absolutely verbalize that to you. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to guess. I don't get loud. I don't get belligerent. I don't mince my words. I need you to understand me and I need to understand you. So I will tell the person, I choose not to experience you. Now that means when I choose not to experience you, I have no, I have no inclination to engage you one way or the other. Sure. Now, if I choose, if we see life sh uh, short, the world is small. If I should run into you, I can at least acknowledge your presence. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I will not ask, yes. how are you? I'm not experiencing you. Mm -hmm. Now, so, that's how I cope. If I can do that with my own birth family, imagine what that's like when you're talking about dealing with friends and people. So when I start telling people, and I do say that, so you don't have to wonder, I'm not experiencing. So don't come back to me later, because I already believe you the first time you showed me who you were, I believe you. Uh -huh. Now you need to believe me. Because yeah. when you can, I had a friend, and this is, I love this topic. I, I could talk about it for hours. Mm, you're going to have to come back and do this. Yeah, we have to. We just have mm. to have another conversation about 
But I want to speak to the when you're when we're going through emotions and we have these emotions because I'm highly sensitive. I put a strong music and I've, I've just, I'm just in the last three years. This is ridiculous, isn't it? Michelle, show how deep it is. I've just realized I had girlfriends, real girlfriends, never had friends like that. I would never let anybody in my circle. I call um, myself being, um, I'm detached. I'm not attached to anyone. People are gonna come in, they can go. I have no attachment to anything or anyone. And that served me well. I'm in the last three years realizing you can have girlfriends, real friends, real people that aren't out to get you. You don't have to be um, sizing up the moment in the room and, and thinking like project, projecting again, my own, you know, my own back junk. I'm trying to keep my language clean. Um, <laughs> 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 I'm But this is not the last law, but I'll, I'll be in my, I'll, I'll do that today. I'll do that today. Let me stop. But I have, <laughs> I, I, I coined what I call, what I call soft lendings. These are real people that serve, they show up in your life. You don't, sometimes you've never seen them before. You don't even know them. And sometimes they're there for the rest of your life sometimes at a point. But I've had soft lendings show up in my life to me when my family wouldn't, I mean, I was ostracized, you know what I mean? The scorn of the family. <laughs> you know, you look a little different, you dress a little something, something, something about you look different. And so, so, so you get, so you start buying into all of that. And then I'm like, nah, man, nah, honey. I, I mean, I had complex about my complexion. My hair is nappy. You know, I'm biracial, so my hair is not as straight as my white counterpart. My nose mm -hmm. is not as pointy. I've had to have clothes pins on the nose to point it. I'm like, how? No, darling, I'm wearing the hair cropped. There's nothing in it. <laughs> and I need nothing on because darling, you are fearfully and wonderfully made more fabulous. I've had to do the work with that. But now get into the emotions. Because sometimes I'm triggered. You heard me mention the word earlier about triggers. I've had my soft landings around me that I now, they are my friends and my brothers and my sisters in spirit and vibe and in energy. They call me up. I call them up. And I'm not saying, listen, you all, because we get it. We have a circle. We understand our language. And I noticed that we're survivors. And, and a lot of us in my age of 60 and plus, and they still aren't, so, they're not thriving yet. Yeah. They're still yeah. surviving, still dealing with, still trying to process. And I'm saying at a point now, I can be a voice for you, darling, because I get you. I'm you and you're me. And so this group here for me, you're soft lending for me. I have been quiet for years saying, mm, I want to be meaningfully impactful in a positive way in someone's life. How? I'm like, I'll go quiet universe. You'll let me know when it's the right time and the right place when I can then be in a position to just shut everything else down and off. Mm -hmm. to go into and so this opportunity, Carrie, my darling, and, and, and JD, oh, this was some... And I, JD, he was here, I, I really did think about it really long and hard. I didn't say yes right away. I was like, you know, I'm a person of my word. So I hope that we will continue to have this dialogue. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I won't go into all that now. I think you got a feel for, I'm a, I'm a thriver. And as you can tell, I take no BS, no prisoners. Yes. <laughs> Call a spade a spade. If you're going to step to me, step correct, because I'm not going to miss my words for you. No, I'm just, do you know, I'm just the sweetest because yeah. in my place, I'm quiet, I'm cool, I like silence, but when we get on this, because we have to voice for persons, because we lose our voice. Mm -hmm. So we need someone like you, Carrie, and the rest of us here, so someone who can advocate in no judgment is coming from a place of pure acceptance, not tolerance. Mm -hmm. I don't like yes. to be tolerated. I can't stand that word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, do you accept me? Either I do or I don't. Yeah. If I accept you, it's every part of you. Now, there may be some mm -hmm. areas we need to work with to improve. Yeah, thank you. you know, but, but that, I think you got a feel for it, darling. I think, I'm good. I'm just fine. <laughs> I, I think uh, we're going to have, have you come back <laughs> and, and uh, really sure. involved in, in more topics. And sure. yeah, it's, it's good to have you on board. So thank you sure. for all what you've given out today. I think. It is beautiful. Plus, I would love to hear from you. Are you camera shy today, my love? Who? Plus. I don't even see anybody else. Is she here? Is she speaking? She said her, she said her reception was bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, I'm just right. reading a message. Don't yeah, worry. She said she'd be yeah, I just popped up. Lovely. I really do thank you. Thank you. It, it's brilliant. Um, I got it. Understood. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you for attending and thank you for being here. I do think that we should cover this again. So uh, most definitely, mm -hmm. um, I do think 
this is going to be a regular thing is that what we're going to do is raise awareness on different topics and different health conditions on a regular basis so i think when it comes to emotion well this is what we're doing um, I, I push out because emotionally i have all of this wasted life that i've wasted in baggage and rubbish in everybody else's life i never knew what my life was about what does this mean and i'm just saying you know what we can change the outcome to where we have been if we want to the choices are ours and this is where we have to learn to remove the pity party yes remove the guilt because mm. only earlier mm. today we talked about um it was a message that was read out and it was a former member of mine and I was kind of like oh my god they must feel you really down and I felt like I needed to go in and rescue but I had to hold off because why am I not there with them anymore anyway so I had to there was the opportunity but the situation changed because I reckon I, I believe that People are influenced by other people and they don't appreciate the value of the person that once helped them up in the first place. They're too busy going where, oh, they've got something better over there or whatever. And, and then all of a sudden, the person they latched onto, which is not a great model, role model, is, is not doing anything active anymore. So that person that let go of your hand for them, mm -hmm. um, ends up being alone anyway so the lesson in that is again one's self appreciate people don't do to others that you do not want done to yourself and that is the motto uh so you know for me emotions we could talk about emotions i want to talk about um self-harm elements in a, a later date but more late a uh, late night but i would never project the message of how somebody tried to take their life away what they try to do with their self to, um, sorry, uh, what they try to do with their self to hurt their self. Um, because putting those ideas out when I talk to you or when we talk to you is only going to implement and plant a seed. So when you're having a weak moment, then sometimes, I mean, this is how I learned to, to try and commit suicide and self-harm was when I'm having a built moment. I remember an idea that somebody planted in my head. Oh yeah, I felt rubbish today. Oh, I'd done this last night and I ended up in the hospital. And it, that message that your brain hangs on to. So when you're in that weak state of mind, it, it makes you do things that you don't want to do if you're not in control of your mind. So it is good not to promote the method you can say, oh, you hurt yourself. You tried to take your life. You can say that, but you do not need to tell anybody how you've done it. You are responsible and the kids are learning and listening to this. So, mm. you know, we have to be very careful. Even messages you put on Facebook, the things that you want to repost from the media where it says somebody wants to try to take their life and this is how they've done it. Don't post it. Don't mm. post it or cut out the word because you're just putting yeah, a edit, edit. message back into somebody else's head. So we can talk about emotions all day long. And we've got mm. about three minutes left or five mm -hmm. minutes left. So is there any questions that you guys would like to ask anybody else? It's gone so quick, but I want to do this again. So um, I feel that. What yeah, do they so, say? So then th I think the, to move from this then, um, everybody spoke about, emotions what tools yeah. or new tools have you learnt? and we could say from 2020 because I mean my goodness none of us expected to live <laughs> live through a 2020 like that I mean what new mm -hmm. tool yeah yeah the new, the new tools for myself that I learned um I'm I'm they don't use the word, they, they use the word a recovering alcoholic, they use the word AA. I'm going to say that I am a, uh, an SH <laughs> survivor oh, well. and um, I am in recovery still and I oh, probably will always be in recovery because that trauma that I experienced was it just like caging someone for so long and having to learn new tools and therefore, so therefore, what I have learned that speaking out saves lives and support saves more. That, that's the end nutshell of it. Um, and 
because I'm learning to talk more and tell somebody about herself if I don't like it or tell them about how I feel. And as Zoli said earlier about putting those barriers up, that's how I'm keeping safe, not taking any crap from anybody and not accepting their rubbish. And I'm making them accountable for how they make someone feel by expressing mm. what they've done. So therefore they yeah. can to put it right. So it's not all cut throat, it's about giving someone an option to put it right so they too can learn. But if not, you walk on by, you carry on forward and you'll see that they're still behind. That's the difference. So it's about occupying your time, giving back, helping somebody else and showing them the tools of what you've learned and passing it back on. That's what I've learned. Pass on the knowledge. Don't keep it to yourself. Yeah. Give it to somebody else. It's called hope. And it's also a mind over the matter. So on that note, I feel that we will come back again and talk about emotions again. Um, we have several topics. Today's Wednesday, right? What's tomorrow's topic? So tomorrow yeah. is uh, Thursday. Uh, Thursday the... topic is uh, that's uh, myself uh, tomorrow. Um, mass gatherings and uh, criminal behaviour. That would be the yeah. topic uh tomorrow um based on uh obviously the covid19 situation um mm. have the government trying to enforce uh their will you know stay home do this do that everything is closed and you'd have uh, a portion and a section of society that are literally saying no we're going to do what we want to do so that the debate is what do people think about both factions uh, of that argument tomorrow mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, Same time. Right. Yeah, six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock. Okay. Um. So you know, we, we will listen in on on you, and um, definitely be here for you tomorrow. I look. Yeah. Forward give to, me some uh, feedback. I think I'm buzzing. You talk about emotions, and I know we've got to go. But you talk about emotions. I, it's so hard to switch off when you're creative, and people might say, "Oh, you're ADHD." I'm not ADHD, but no. you could diagnose that as ADHD, because I can't switch it off, but I know it's about ADHD, it's because they're creative and they have to find that ventilation somewhere. Oh. <laughs> Way of expressing yourself, isn't it? It is, and I, I think at the end of the day, when, when you're excited and you've got passion and a drive, you're, you're gonna get up, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, and I get up to save other people's lives, and I think this is why we're doing what we're doing, raising awareness, you know, one, what, what, what's the stat? status is it one person every 40 seconds dies of suicide right every 40 yeah. seconds that's more mm -hmm. than the rate of the covid okay so therefore yes. that's why it's vital that we speak out uh, and we do help and we do stop holding the knowledge share the knowledge thank you guys for joining us today i really really do appreciate your um, you're welcome yeah i really thank do you. appreciate it Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you again. Mum is the word. If you want to find us, please visit JDA Lifestyle Fitness on Facebook. Jay owns that group. He's it's monitoring that. It's a health group with plenty of knowledge on there. Um, and please do visit uh, the Mum Project. Uh, Facebook Mental Health Awareness Real Talk. You can look on Facebook. We're not just on Facebook. You can visit the webpage and support us in that way as well, which is www.momproject.co.uk. And any guys, anybody else wants to say where they can find you and what you do too? Go ahead. Um, yeah, you can find me as always, um, intelligence service investigations.co.uk, um, specializing in advocacy and uh, all forms of investigation. So um, you can again find me on Facebook. Um, this six o'clock uh, show, if I can call that, will be a regular feature, uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, it's This week is our first week, it's in our, uh, the infancy, and we'll be trying to um, put out a schedule so that people can follow it uh, each week. And we hope to be uh, at least four weeks ahead of ourselves. So it gives people time to uh, pencil in, you know, just the one hour that we're asking from everybody um, to push it. Uh, we will have some events. Uh, we have the prostate cancer uh, event on the 28th of January. Um, and we will have uh, MBE uh, award winner um, Ian McKellar 
uh, and some other Errol things. McKellar. I beg your pardon. Get his he'll, name he'll, right. He'll, he'll crucify Errol. me for that. I've done that twice uh, today. Errol uh, <laughs> McKellar, uh, MB, and he will be talking about um, his own personal uh, struggle with uh, prostate cancer uh, and his uh, recovery and his fight to get to the uh, dizzy heights uh, where he is at the moment as a, uh, a very well respected uh, statesman for uh, prostate cancer in particular in uh, Afro-Caribbean men. So that's that's where we're at at, at the moment. Yeah, um, not forget not forget the other two because I always think that you know if somebody's taking part in an event, we must make sure who it is. So there's Errol uh, McKellar, uh, Nick Mick from the elders, and uh, Jimmy Reese. They're all yes. to participate yes. and tell you there are experts in this recovery session in, in this prospect cancer so it is vital that this information goes out it's not just for men to listen to women need to know because women you are raising voice to men so you need to educate okay so, oh. all right okay. thank you very much guys um, okay. for joining you, no problem and thank you facebook for joining in enjoyed it and i've learned some things as well so thank Good. you share the awareness glad to have you guys on here tonight awesome. nice to meet you